we get a whole host of questions about how to connect various different vessels within the brewery. This video today is going to demystify that subject. Hey everyone, I'm Jim here at Montmiller HQ today and I'm joined by Rob. We're going to be talking about the various different fixtures, fittings and couplings that exist within the brew house. It's a topic we get asked questions almost on a daily basis and without a little bit of knowledge can be maybe a little bit tricky to understand, right? Yeah, sure. There's quite a lot to it. There's various different ways of cracking the nut as it were. So let's demystify it. Loosely speaking, there's kind of five key ways that you can couple one bit of hose to another yep. or to a piece of equipment sure. in our brew house, right? Yeah. Um, what, what are some of those? Okay, so starting with the most simple, uh, we've got hose barbs where you just have a hose that just pushes on. It can be secured with something like a butterfly clip, but basically, in essence, you've got a hose that pushes onto a barb. That's the most simple of the fittings within the brew house. So after barbs then, Rob, what else might we see in the brew house that's kind of a simple way to connect one thing to another? Okay, so we have screw fittings. Uh, now this might link in with the previous one because you can have a, a screwed fitting that is also a hose barb, yep. but then you can have a a cam lock that's also a hose barb. And then maybe moving on a little bit from there, what other kind of couplings have we got? As we go on for that, from there, the couplings all have some type of advantage. So let's start at cam locks next. Yep. Um, so they are a, an easier way to connect two vessels. So what might be one of the other ways that's maybe a little bit more intricate to connect one thing to another? There we'd be, we're looking at triclamps. Now they're really handy on the, fermentation side and that's because they're completely sanitary products yeah nothing from the inside touches the outside so it's really easy to clean and um, even when you're putting this fit in together it remains sanitary and then i guess the the last one which um can be really complex but also massively versatile yeah what what's that rob john guest so you can connect one tube to another tube with a simple plastic push fit john guest fit in they are absolutely awesome yeah fantastic mainly for dispense so that's a really versatile way then of connecting because there's so many different connectors available within the john guest range yep. that you can have branches splitters you can change the size so you've almost got like an infinite amount of connections available there yeah and one really important note is you can go from one type of connection to another connection um, which is quite often really handy when you're trying to for example add CO2 to a fermenter, you go from John Guest to a screwed fit in to a push fit barb into your fermenter. So that's a bit of an overview of the different kind of connectors that are available in our brew house. What we're gonna do now is take a bit of a deeper look on each of them individually, just to try and help the understanding and make sure that everybody's got as much knowledge as possible. Do you want to give us a bit of a deeper look at push fit connectors to start us off? Sure, let's um, just start at the very beginning. Basically, when we're looking at connecting vessels or connecting items within the brew house, we're going to be looking at flexible tubing. There is a route that you could go down that it is like a hard stainless steel fittings. We can just park that for a moment. We're looking at a flexible solution where you're basically going to be using silicon hose. Almost all vessels can be connected using silicon hose. So it's whether you're connecting a kettle to a plate chiller or a plate chiller to a pump or anything really can a be- kettle to a kettle. Exactly yeah. that, exactly that. So we're gonna be looking at silicon hose. Almost all the time within home brewing, the half inch size silicon hose is what we're gonna be using. Yeah. Um, because, and there's, there's a good reason for that because the half inch silicon hose matches up with the half inch push fit fittings that we're gonna be talking about now. So when we look at a half inch hose in, so our 12 mil silicon hose in, by far and away the most popular size, that fits to a half inch hose barb. Yep. So you know if you're buying the 12 mil silicon tube in and you buy a half inch hose barb, bosh, they will fit together. Excellent. And that half inch that you refer to, is that the internal diameter of the hose or the overall diameter? Right, this is something that we need to clear up and we need to clear up really, really quickly. Don't get dragged into, or on the whole, don't get dragged into something being described as half inch 
actually measuring half inch in any way. It's just a way of describing a size fitting. If you want, you can Google exactly the dimensions of a male half inch BSP fitting. But in the whole, we don't need to do that. We just need to know that just because it's described as a half inch fitting, don't try and measure it because that measurement is not going to be half inch in any way, shape, form. That's it's just that's not how it works. For anybody that hasn't seen it before or understands how a hose bar push fit works, yep. talk us through it. It's dead easy. We're talking about the most simple fitting. So you've got your 12 mil silicon hose and you've got your half inch male barb and you simply just push the, uh, the silicon tube in onto the barb and it stays put. It's a nice snug fit. Silicon is really adaptive. It, it molds around the fitting and it's really quite difficult to, to then pull it off. Yep. You can do it. You can remove the, remove the hose. Um, and if it's in a situation where you definitely can't have the hose bursting off, then we suggest that you use a butterfly hose clip. Okay, but push fit is also available on some of the dispense side of things when we're talking about kegging and getting beer in and out of kegs and adding gas into kegs. Where might a push fit show up there? So we also have barbs that are used in the kegging world on the disconnects. So both the beer out and the gas in, you can get as barbs. Um, the, simply a case of pushing the gas hose and beer line onto the barbs. Sometimes they require some heat so you can warm up the tubing in some hot water that makes them nice and malleable and they push onto the push onto the disconnect but that is a really secure it's a basic fitting and it does have some disadvantages but that is the most simple form of fitting for gas and beverage line so in summary then push fit barbed connections are super simple really approachable and un easy to get your head around yep and certainly in the disconnect world tend to be some of the more affordable options when we're talking about the um, beer and gas disconnect for kegs. Yeah, sure, because there's, there's, there's nothing to add. You know, you do, you're just uh, pushing the line onto the, onto the barbs, dead easy. Yeah. Okay, so second up on the list is screw fittings and how we can utilise those in the brew house. Rob, give us an overview. Okay, screwed fittings cover pretty much the whole gambit of what we're talking about. So you can get a screw fitting barb. Yeah. Get a screw fitting barb. You can get a screw fitting cam lock, tri clamp, and indeed John Guest fitting. So all of what we're talking about come can be present with a screw fitting. Yeah. Now they're basically used for, such as this hose barb, screwing directly into a valve that we've got here from, in this instance, off from a kettle. Couple of things to note, and I'm gonna go back to this sizing don't measure that and say it's not a half inch it's described as half inch it doesn't measure half inch across and that's the same for all of the bsp fittings but almost across the board what we're using within the home brewery is half inch bsp anything at all we need to note with that rob yeah there is Really, stainless steel, which both these products are, we need to be using PTFE tape to lubricate the threads. Um, so to make a leak-proof seal on this, which is a parallel BSP fitting, okay, we're gonna need PTFE tape. We're also gonna need PTFE tape if it's a tapered thread. Now, tapered threads are specially designed for liquid. They definitely need PTFE tape and you will feel them tighten up. They're not to be over tightened and they do rely on PTFE tape. So next up, we're moving on to the first of our slightly more complex ways to uh, join vessels and hoses together and that's cam locks. So Rob, top line, what is a cam lock and how does it work? Okay, well the basic the thing about a cam lock is it's a really easy way of connecting two hoses. Yep. So we have a male and we have a female and they're connected together with the two arms and it pulls a groove. Interestingly, these are also called cam and groove fittings. So cam locks, cam and groove, interchangeable. Um, the arms pull on the groove and they force the two together. Yeah, and so the cams are actually on the arms. Cams are on the arms, grooves on the actual, what we call the male part of the cam lock. And then on the other side of the connection, yep. there can be oh, both. Oh, a myriad. Yeah. yeah, a complete myriad. So we could have a valve on one side and a tube on the other, 
or we could have two sets of tubing that we're connecting together. It's actually, it's, there's a myriad of different yeah. um, items we can have on either side. But the main thing is the cam lock makes it really easy to connect two together. What else have we got to take into account when we talk about cam locks, Rob? Okay, really important that if we are using cam locks anywhere in the brew house where it's absolutely imperative that the items don't come apart, you have to use the cam locks with the locking pins. And this is really important because there's a lot of cam locks out there on the homebrew market that don't have the locking pins. And you've got to be really careful using those because under certain circumstances, they can work loose and then you've got two, two pipes that are sprung apart. Now, if that is on the hot side, um, anywhere it's gonna be a disaster. But to be honest, on the hot side, it's actually a safety feature as well. Yeah. In summary then, on a cam lock, we've got a couple of really key features. First of all, if used with the um, locking pins, you've got a really safe yeah, system, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. It's a really safe, secure method of connecting two hoses together. Yeah. Secondly, it's uh, versatile, so can be used with other stuff you've already got in the brewery. Yeah, like sure. the taps we've already talked about Ex with the screw fit. Exactly, because they come as screw fit fittings yeah. and they come as push fit fittings. So yeah. yeah, they're a really versatile fixture. And then thirdly, the seal you're going to get is really, really tight. It's a gas tight seal actually on a on a cam lock so yeah that is it's perfect and also it's really easy to connect and disconnect whereas with just a barb where you're pushing on a silicon tube where you're just pushing on silicon tubing that's quite tough to get off this yeah. is dead easy it's just two arms bosh comes apart so now we're going to take a look at tri clamps and how we might be able to implement them rob first and foremost what is a tri clamp and how does it work okay it's a fantastic method for connecting two items in a sanitary fashion. So we might have a flange on a unitank, for example, and we want to connect a sample valve to it. We can easily do that using the tri-clamp fittings. So it's a flange, a fitting, a gasket that goes between the two, and a clamp that clamps both of them together in a sanitary fashion. So there's quite a few different sizes of tri-clamp as well, Rob. What's that all about? Okay, it's a little bit like the BSP. We're not going to be trying to measure the tri-clamp flanges, gaskets or clamps because it all gets a little bit complicated. Just know the specs of your particular vessel and you'll know whether it's 1.5, 34 mil, 3 inch or various other different sizes. But if something says that it's a 1.5 inch tri-clamp, you will know that a 1.5 inch tri-clamp gasket will fit, a 1.5 inch clamp will fit a 1.5 inch actual item that you're trying to connect. So what about any other benefits? Well, that leads into the fact that because we know it's a, for example, a 1.5 inch tri-clamp, it doesn't matter if that's made by Brutals or SS Brutec or Blickman or any other manufacturer. If it's a 1.5 inch tri-clamp, that will fit a 1.5 inch tri-clamp flange. So the fact that this can all come apart um, probably makes it really easy for cleaning. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. The gaskets tend to be made of silicon, so they can actually be boiled. All the other parts tend to be made of stainless steel, so they are super easy to clean. For example, when you look at our kettles that have a tri-clamp flange for mounting our elements, they could be screw fit fittings. However, that would be really awkward to get the element out for cleaning. Whereas on a tri-clamp, it's an absolute piece of cake. Just simply undo the clamp and you can remove the element, clean it and then place it back leak proof really simple really easy method of fitting that element inside a kettle oh and there's one other thing as well you might have a port on a unitank for example that you don't want to use it might be for a sample tap for example and you don't have an actual sample tap to place on it you can blank them off so we have blanks for all of the different sizes of tri clamps and it's a simple case of using a tri clamp blank of the correct size and then a gasket and the correct size actual clamp itself and bang you can make your vessel completely leak proof there's some key benefits to a tri-clamp one is the sanitary nature of it which yep. sounds like it's a big benefit for people secondly it's the versatility that you can go between different brands yep and thirdly it's really really secure i will say about tri-clamps they do take a little bit of getting used to they can seem a little bit fiddly to start off with you soon get the hang of it and develop your own way of being able to put the two, two items together. And last on the agenda today is something that's really reserved for after we've created our work. So dispense side predominantly and a little bit in fermentation, and that's John Guest fittings. Rob, 
Tell us a little bit about John Guest fittings. We absolutely love John Guest fittings and one of those reasons is it's a British brand. We're really proud to support John Guest. And there are actually other fittings that we, that we could use. We could import those fittings from China. I actually much prefer to use John Guest simply because they're a British brand, been going since the year dot, and they're trusted by plumbers the world over. And just tell me a little bit, Rob, how does John Guest work? Okay, we have got some threaded fittings and we've got some push fit fittings. The push fit fittings create a gas and liquid tight seal simply by pushing the line into the fitting. And once you know what you're doing, that's also a re-releasable fitting as well. Nice and easy, just a push fit and uh, re-releasable fitting that's perfect to use in dispense. So if you head to the John Guest section on our website, Rob, there is a whole host of different fittings, right? What's the big benefit of doing that? It allows for customer's choice. As we said earlier, there's, there's more than one way to crack a nut and what might be right for one customer might not be right for another. What about tubing size, Rob? What's the situation there? It's really easy with John Guest. We basically sell three different size of gas and beverage tubing. If you're buying three eighths beer line and you're buying a three eighths John Guest fitting, the two will fit together. And that's across the whole range. So if you just keep it simple like that, everything will work out. So the range is massive. There's a whole host of different products that you can use to solve various different problems within the brew house. Even natty little bits like proper shut off valves that create a gas tight seal when they're closed or individual pieces that fit onto the bottom of a grandfather conical fermenter for example so that you can make your own sample valve. Really it's endless what you can do with John Guest fittings and beverage or gas line. And I love the expandability of it as well. For example, splitters. Yep. So you can have from your regulator going to your kegerator. If you've only got one keg to begin with, yep. that's fine. But then you can add a two-way splitter. Yep. So you can then feed to two kegs. Exactly. You that. can then do that to three kegs if you wanted. Yeah, or then divide the lines up using John Guest fittings and go to secondary regulators and then out to the kegs. It really is absolutely endless what you can do with John Guest. Plus, Jim, using John Guest fittings, you can make it so the gas or beverage line swivels on the fitting. And this is a massive bonus of these fittings. It just stops that jumble inside a kegerator or the, the closing of the door moment where you have to try and get it shut where everything's still in place. That really is um, cut down with John Guest fittings that allow the tube to move around the fitting. Right, so we've covered a lot of ground in this video already and there's a whole host of stuff on the whole topic of fixtures and fittings and couplings, which I'm sure you'll still have questions about. We'd love to hear about those questions. Put them in the comments below and we'll endeavor to get back to as many as we possibly can. Any final thoughts from you, Rob? Yeah, be really careful with measurements. Just because something is described as half inch BSP, it doesn't measure half inch across in any way, shape or form. So if there's one thing to take away from the video, it's simply that. We trust you've enjoyed the video please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, give us a thumbs up, that helps massively. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And other than that, we just wanna say, have a great day. Cheers.